Hi everyone and welcome back and today is Sunday and uh, we are again going to cover a lot of content on the GraphQL and the Node.js ORM. Okay, starting from the previous video which we covered yesterday uh, in this playlist, uh, we were able to cover the GraphQL client using React and now we are moving towards the direction of having a database with the GraphQL server. So we are still writing a Yoga GraphQL. Now we will see how we can integrate a MongoDB. Like all the insert, update, delete, fetch, all these things we will do at the real time with the MongoDB database. You will have a small dot env, you will provide your Mongo URI, right? Which I mean, I am already providing the Docker Compose for that. You can just do Docker Compose up and you will be able to have a MongoDB container running. And then you can just do localhost 27017 and the database name. This is your Mongo URI. Before that, uh, we need to talk about this uh, GraphQL tools. Okay. This is really a helpful helper library, you can say, because till now we were doing, we were writing a one single schema file. But how can we distribute our type definitions into multiple .js files? Okay, there is a post, user, comments, they all have their own type definitions, they have their own resolvers. So if we define them in the modular way, a folder with a post will have its own schema, will have its own resolvers, will have its own MongoDB model. Similarly, the comments, post, user, all have their own set of type definitions and resolver. The only challenge is how can we make, how can we merge all the type definitions and resolver together? Because finally the GraphQL needs the single type definition. Here we have single type definitions and a single set of resolvers. It's not like you put the type definitions into 10 different files and pass 10 different files. No. We have to provide a root type definitions and root set of resolvers. That is a merge resolvers and merge type definitions. So to merge the type definitions, merge resolvers and making your schema executable, we have to use this GraphQL tools. So you can see here, I have defined a type definitions and I have defined some resolvers like this is one resolver, this is another resolver to merge them. And to create executable steam schema, I am passing, I'm using make executable schema and I'm passing type definitions and an array of resolvers that it is merging. Okay, so there are uh, other advantages of it like you are, you are able to have a modular approach that everything is splitted in their own scope. Okay. Uh, so this is important executable schema because now we are going to have all type definitions separately, all resolvers separately and this GraphQL tools will help us to merge type definitions, merge resolvers and pass that into our uh, code. Okay, you can see in server index.js we always going to pass a single schema and single context. Context can be your data source, context can be uh, anything which is global, which you wanted to pass. Like in the context you are logging in, you can pass your own user data in the context or the database connection, either MySQL, MongoDB or anything. So in the query and mutation functions, we can access this data source there. In context of MongoDB, we are going to pass all the set of models. Before that, we wanted to have a database connection established. So we are already using Mongoose. Currently, I don't want to create a separate file for it. What I can do is uh, we can just do simple before starting the server mongoose.connect and we need a database so that we are getting from uh, process.env, the database URL. I am getting that uh, as a mongo URI. Mongo URI, we are getting as a DB, let's say, create alias for it and we are getting it from process.env. And now we can use this DB for the MongoDB connection. MongoDB connect DB and there are some argument. This is going to return a promise. We can just handle it. 
let's say if it is connected then it is going to call dot then if it is failed then it is going to call catch and we can just log it for now what is the error with your connection if it is connected then you can simply say we can do it right away here console.log connected okay so this is simple database connection here we are passing uh, two different argument user create index which is true and another argument is new user parser i think new url parser that is true that's it some argument while connecting to the database now we need to build this context object so this context object is going to have two things our mongodb models and pubsub for subscription right we have used it in the last video so this is our context models we are going to build from uh, different files so we can say uh, we are going to have a config inside config we are going to manage all our database configurations so let's create uh, here we can say let's create a new folder uh, database let's say and inside that we have all the models models means what all different collections we wanted to use in our application so your collections will be like here we are going to use uh, comments and then we have post we are going to use the same example post comment and why it is showing under this we create a new folder okay we have post comment and there is another file we can have is user and we are going to define mongoose models here and how we define mongoose model a uh, simple we have to import uh, mongoose import mongoose from mongoose this is like an audium for interacting with the mongodb database okay and we can define a schema so first of all we are defining the user schema and then similarly we will we can define all the other schemas like post and comment user schema equal to new schema and schema we need to get from mongoose I mean this is very basic and most of the Node.js developers are already aware how all these things works. Mongoose.schema and here we have new schema and here we are going to pass okay name is the, the attribute we are going to have then we are going to have email all the other arguments are okay the type for the name is a string type is string okay is it uh, required then another attribute is required which is let's say true so same thing you can populate for the email type string now we also want to have a uniqueness here so there is a unique attribute it's not coming unique uh, we can just mark it as a true okay similarly we have type name email uh, let's say another is age and we are going to have the same set of types this can be a type number required true same thing we need to make required in the graphql query and mutation okay now user is going to have the posts right so how we are going to do this post is another collection okay you are going to have and user is going to have a one to many relationship here so this is how we define the references in the database so we are going to define a user relationship with uh, post 
and comments. So schema dot types dot object ID. Okay, this is the relationship and the reference. Reference for this is post. Now post collection we when we build it, we will define it. Similarly, we have comments and uh, with the MongoDB defining relationships are like easy. Now this is comments. Okay. Similarly, uh, this is for user schema. Similarly, we can define the post and all. Now let's just give export default this model. Mongoose.model. Let's say and define your model name, which is capital user and user schema. Okay, similarly, I will define the post, the attributes will change, and the relationship, right? So in the post I'm going to have just first rename these things post schema this is going to be post and this is my post schema post will have a comment and the author let's say an author will be a single right post will have a one to one relationship with the author so it will not be an array and reference will be user and post will have a reference with a set of comments so multiple relations is fine because you are going to have many comments to a single post okay so this is the post schema we have similarly we can define the comment schema we are just doing copy paste nothing much here this will be comment schema we didn't change the attributes of the post let's do that after this so this is comment again in the comment schema uh, the attributes are going to be text okay I mean the text the, the text you are adding as a comment and the author we have the author and we have the, the post so comment will be written by an, a single author for a single post let's say so it's one to one right so it's, it's not going to be an array in the relationship so this is going to be for a single post and done by a single user and you can add as many comments as you want so comment schema is all done in the post we need to change the attributes like title body and all so here we have title body and there is a published is a boolean flag which is of type boolean I hope uh, this is clear. This is how we define the models in uh, Mongoose. Uh, Mongoose is Audium. You can call it as like a same thing which SQLize does for MySQL. This model definition is doing with the Mongoose for MongoDB. Okay, all schema definitions are done. Now we can actually export all these things. Export means uh, here we have defined all the models. So we can import all the models together. Okay, so I can say index inside database. I can create index.js. Or I, I need to change these names. I didn't like these much. Or maybe let's say reveal in the finder what is the structure of these folders. Okay, so index.js will do nothing but it will import and we are going to export all these things together. Export const, export const models and we are going to export all these things together by importing it. User post and comment. Okay. So user post and comment, these are our models. Okay, inside database, let's rename it to config. These are our models, I think there are some paste happening so what I what I mean to say I will fix that here we are importing here we are going to import all the 
uh, models like import user from this particular file this can be a config you don't need to worry about the database having folder names and all config is already there this is our models now this can be our config okay inside models just remove this index.js sorry for the structuring okay now this index.js will import all these models together like uh, where we are getting the user let's quickly do this import user from go one step back inside we have models and there we have user similarly we can do that for post and comment I mean this is simply ES6 import export which you already know how to do and this is post okay now we are exporting all the models together here and in a server index.js we can import all these models and these models we can pass in uh, our context so uh, we are going to import models from so we are going to import it going outside there is a database inside that we have config okay simple config and we can pass these models in the context which we are passing okay now what we need to do is in our query and mutation we start we will start accessing these models to read and write in the database in the next video we will do docker compose up we will have a mongodb up and running connection is established and then we, we have the same set of query and mutations we will also define them redefine them because now we have to split them into a different different folders a, a more modular approach for production level application where you keep the type definitions and resolvers separate for each and every entity okay let's see that in the next video uh, thanks everyone